began by saying that man is a tripart being, spirit, soul, and body. Just as, uh, you know, we could have problems in the body, the soul also, which is our mind, our will, our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings, that realm of our, us could also be affected. It could be hurt, could have pain, it could have problems. I want to talk about the basis on which we can receive emotional healing and wholeness. And then we are going to, I'm going to share with you, uh, what we need to do to receive the restoration of our soul involves healing, deliverance, and journeying into wholeness. Three parts. Healing. Because we have wounds, hurts that need to be healed. Deliverance. Because some of the problems can have demonic influence on it. There could be evil spirits behind those things. And so you need to get rid of that. So there's need for deliverance. And we also need to journey into wholeness. Meaning, it doesn't end by you and me just praying the prayer today. There's got to be an ongoing journey. Meaning, you and I need to maintain some right practices so that we can journey into wholeness and stay whole emotionally. But, on the other hand, there's also the important, the needed importance of putting up resistance to the devil. That is, you stand up, you identify what's causing the problem, and then you take resistance. You take action against those things. That's why the Bible says in 1 Peter 1, gird up the loins of your mind. So first thing is, we're going to repent. So if there's wrong things I've been thinking, I want to repent of it. Then we're going to ask God to forgive us. Lord, please forgive me. I acknowledge my wrongdoing. Now please forgive me. Then... We're going to say that we're going to affirm our faith in the completed work of the cross. That's the basis. I'm not looking to a human person. I'm not looking to the pastor. I'm looking to what Jesus did for me on the cross. So I affirm my faith in that. And number four, very important is I need to release forgiveness to people. So some of the problems I have in my soul may have been because of abuse, because of other people who may have hurt me. And so we need to release forgiveness. Then we need to embrace the truth of God's word. Areas where we have problems. Say, God, I'm going to believe your word. For example, if you're always fearful, then you need to embrace God's word that says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. You've got to embrace that. And then we renounce the lies. Renounce the lies that the devil's been trying to put into your mind. Renounce the untruths. Number seven is to close all the doors, all the entry points. And part of this would be, if I've been involved in the occult, I need to close those doors because I'm the one who opened it. Doors, And then we expel evil spirits. So if there are areas in your life where you find that, you know, the problem that I'm facing is actually because of unclean spirits, I need to deal with it. And then we consecrate ourselves to the Lord and welcome the work of the Holy Spirit. Let's say this together. Lord, I confess and repent of continual and habitual sin. I've been engaged in. Now just there are things that you know you're aware of in your own life. Just say, God, I'm sorry. In Jesus' name, I cancel, negate, and nullify all dedications, all prayers, all rituals, all sacrifices, and all vows made by me or my ancestors to false gods and goddesses. I cancel the effects of any of mine or my ancestors' involvement in the occult and in occult practices. I declare in Jesus' name that I submit all ties towards these demonic powers. In Jesus' name, I renounce all associations with demonic spirits. In Jesus' name. Get rid of these. I want you to say this with me. In Jesus' name. I bind and expel out of my being every evil spirit. Every unclean spirit that may have gained access or entrance of any kind. In Jesus' name. Now I want you to specifically cast out spirits that you know call them by the name by the kind of problem they're causing you 